Let's say you wanted to develop a program to work with fractions. We're going to show two different approaches to tackling this particular problem. In the first example, we'll show you how to write a program um, that just implements fractions without using classes and objects. And in the second case, we're going to show you how you can actually define a fraction class and then work with fraction objects in your program. So let's go into Xcode and create a new project. Once again, it's a command line utility and a foundation tool. We click on Choose here. We're going to call this Program Fraction 1. Click on Save. And then we're going to edit the file Fraction1.m. We're going to clean this program up a little bit, delete a couple lines that were inserted for us automatically. And now let's go to the beginning of the program and insert a comment. Program to work with fractions. Press the return key and notice that Xcode once again displays your comments in green. Comment is two consecutive slash characters. They can uh, be typed anywhere on the line. Anything to the right of those slash characters is treated as a comment by the compiler and gets ignored. We'll come down to our program and we're going to want uh, two variables here. One to store the numerator and another to store the denominator. So let's make a variable called numerator. It's an integer and we'll set its initial value to 1. Now by default variables in Objective-C uh, that is the so-called local variables do not have any default initial value. So it's important that you give them an initial value either at the time that the variable is declared as we're doing up here or after the variable is declared and before you use it. So here we've set a numerator value of 1, a denominator value of 3, and now we're just going to display the value of the numerator and the denominator, and we'll make it look or appear as if it's a fraction by displaying the numerator, which is an integer, so we use percent %i, followed by a slash, followed by the denominator, which is also an integer, so we write percent %i again and then we specify the two variables that we wanted to display. Now notice as we type that Xcode actually does this auto-completion for you if you have it set on in your preferences and if you like what you see you can just press the tab key and Xcode will then complete um, the um, will, will fill in the blanks for you. So now we put a semicolon at the end of the statement and our program is ready to go we're going to uh, get the console up here. So let's show the console. Put it over here. And if we're going to come back over here and we're going to type build and go to run our program. And here's the output from our program. You can see we get the output. The fraction is uh, followed by the value of our numerator, which is 1 and that in turn gets followed by the value of our, denominator, of our denominator which is 3 and once again since we return the value 0 on the console we, we see here the message that the debugger has exited with status 0. So that's a simple program example once again and if you had to work with a lot of fractions in your program you'd have to have a lot of these numerator variables and a lot of these denominator variables uh, one numerator and one denominator to represent each of your fractions uh, but there's really a better way to do this and that involves uh, defining a fraction class which we're going to show in the next example okay so now we're going to show how you can define your first class in Objective-C we're going to once again start up a new project in Xcode. Once again, we're going to create a foundation tool. We're going to call this project Fraction 2. Click on Save. And once again, we go into our .m file, our Objective-C source file. We're going to clean it up a little bit, delete some of these lines here, add a comment at the beginning. This is the second version of our fraction program. So now we want to actually define a class which we're going to call a fraction class 
And how do we go about doing that? Well, we do that by writing two sections in Objective-C. One is known as the interface section and the other is known as the implementation section. We define an interface section by using the at character. This defines what's known as a directive. And we're going to call our class fraction. And so we write the name of the class, we follow it by a colon character, and then we write NS object. Now what is that that we've just written here? What we've written here is at the beginning, as I mentioned, of an interface section. The name of the class is fraction. The colon separates the name of the class from what's known as the parent class. Every class except the root class in Objective-C must have a parent class. So this defines the, con the notion of inheritance and subclassing, which we'll talk about a little bit later in this course. For now, whenever you define a new class in Objective-C, you're going to write the class name, the colon, and you'll write the name of this root class, which is NSObject. We're going to start a section here with a left curly brace, and inside that section we list variables which are known as the class's instance variables. This is the private data that gets stored inside each instance of a class. Just like when we talked about classes earlier, we mentioned, for example, a car might have internal data that keeps track of, for example, how much is in the gas tank or how many miles you've driven. Our fraction class is going to have two private values, two variables, instance variables. One is called the numerator, which is an integer, and the next one is the denominator, which is also an integer. After we define the instance variables for our class, we're going to actually write these method headers, and we'll talk about these more in detail. These define the methods that are implemented in this class. We're going to have a print method. The print method will actually display the value of a fraction. We're going to have a method that will allow us to set the fraction's numerator, so we're going to call it set numerator and the set numerator method is going to take an integer value as its argument which we'll call end and we're also going to have a corresponding method called set denominator which will take an integer argument which we'll call d and that completes our interface section I'll review this in more detail uh, with you shortly, but for now let's just take a look once again at the set numerator method declaration here. We don't actually put the code here, we just tell the compiler what the method looks like. That involves telling the compiler what type of method it is. A minus sign indicates it's an instant method as opposed to a plus sign for a class method. We indicate inside